So far, I've tried beating Besiege with only one machine, using only four pieces, and also entirely without my keyboard. All of these challenges relied greatly on one thing though, and that's weapons. So many levels can be easily beat with enough bombs, and that's what gave me the idea to try to beat Besiege using only the first tab of blocks. For this challenge, I can use the three types of logs, the wooden pole, this single type of wheel, the steering hinge, and finally braces. That's really not a lot to work off of, and some of these later levels would get extremely difficult. Now level 1 though isn't exactly that difficult of a level and starting out here I built a very simple car and pretty easily I could hit the house and that beats the level. Level 2 also is pretty much exactly the same. Just have to run into this windmill here and that beats the level. Surprisingly though this car was getting me pretty far and even level 3 here you can see I'm still able to just run into things and beat these levels. I was thinking my luck was going to run out though on this next level here because this is a massive castle in the way. Normally I use bombs to explode it, but I realized here you could just go right around it and as long as I'm careful enough, I'm able to get right up on this mount and destroy the windmill. Now this next level though is officially where things get a little more tricky. I have to kill a pretty good amount of these guys and I can't just run into them or else I'm gonna get destroyed. My plan though is to use this bomb that I found on the side of the map and as long as I explode it at a good time, I should be able to kill everyone. Already this first attempt didn't seem bad, but I was lagging enough guys that it was a bit of a problem. I realized though as long as I drive backward for a bit and group them all together. Once I get back into position, I'm able to fly right back on them with my flaming car, and the fire is going to spread a ton through everyone, and after not too long here, I was able to kill enough guys, and that beat the level. Now level 6 here is also a little tricky. This one, I'm constantly getting shot at by this laser, and it's definitely going to kill me before I'm able to climb this little mountain. Fortunately here, I had this solution planned out for a little while, and my main plan was to build up a few wood logs and fling it onto the monument. Now you'll realize here I have a limited build height so I have to start building it sideways. With another steering hinge I should be able to fling it to the side. After a little bit of working out the speeds and everything, I was able to give it a test here and you can see as I get near the monument, I fling down on it and that ends up beating the level. This next level here though, I was pretty sure was going to be impossible. This one specifically says you need to use explosive to destroy the castle and that was making me a bit nervous. Now I started out by doubling up the wheels to get myself a bit more friction against the ground. After that you see a built up a bit of a battering ram. This broke off immediately when I hit the castle though, so I was concerned that I actually was going to need explosives and this wasn't going to be possible. Next up though, I figured that maybe I just didn't have enough speed, so I stacked a bunch of steering hinges and you can see as I fling them down, I should be able to do some damage. On the castle, this seemed to work and I got a tiny bit of progress on the bottom. Now one of these things, I didn't think was going to be enough, but if I stacked more steering hinges on here, I was hoping I was going to be able to almost hug the castle and just completely completely crush it. On my first approach, things didn't seem to grab quite right, but another try here, I went around to the other side of the castle, and once I got here, I took a really good bite out of it, and this got me a ton of progress. Unfortunately though, there just wasn't another good spot to grab it from, and I ended up falling over and having it break. Now at this point, I was thinking maybe if I added on more steering hinges, I'd be able to get something done, but that's when I realized if I just keep copying this design, I'll have intersecting placements, and the game really doesn't seem to like that. By angling myself towards the castle. Pretty easily here I'll have a ton ram right through it and that beats that level. Now after that I have another monument level here and this one's tougher than all of the others. Now starting out here just trying to climb this mountain I couldn't do it with these small wheels so I decided to use the scaling tool here and make them twice as big. This helped a lot but now the wind was becoming a big problem and I couldn't get to the top without being blown away. Fortunately this monument is very weak though and with one log going pretty slow through it I was able to break it. This intersection placement trick might seem like it's OP, but it has a massive flaw that I'll talk about in a little bit. Before that though, I have a level here that completely does not benefit from it, and what I need to do is get these logs on top of that little platform. In order to do that, I build up some steering hinges here to carefully grab it so I'd be able to drag it around. It was just barely balanced straight to hold on to it here, but not too much trouble, I was able to roll around and finally defeat it. And after one more level where I could pretty easily just copy some stuff here, that's the first island destroyed and next up is island 2. This one's a lot harder and starting out here I have a major flaw with my copy trick. Now I tried beating the level with this but since I need to kill everyone it's super unlikely that I'll accidentally manage to hit everything. Now I started out here just by copying a log a ton of times and you can see how it shoots out from the side. By rotating it a bit I should be able to go right into the castle and I managed to get one of the guys in the towers. Now there's another guy on the other
other side as well, so I knew I needed to copy this over. Once I did this though, the game was already noticeably getting very laggy, and this seemed to be a massive problem. Now what I tried doing here was choosing a single log to keep the lag down as much as I could, and this seemed to be mostly okay. I was able to target the first guy in the tower, and by adding on one more log here, I was able to get the other guy. These are the only two guys that aren't on the ground, and therefore are very difficult to access. But those guys taken care of, I should be able to use my car design now, and by making it a little bit faster, as soon as I ram these guys, it's just enough to kill them, and after not too long here, XT, I managed to get all of them, and beat that level. Now next up here is Southern Shrine, and for this one, I need to kill most of the birds. Unfortunately though, the birds are very high up, so in order to get them, I'm gonna need a big wall. I can't just keep building up though, because I'll end up reaching the build height limit, so in order to get around that here, you see I used some steering hinges to rotate up my machine. This didn't do a bad job of getting in the way, but it was still just a little bit too short, and I wasn't gonna get enough of the birds. So to solve that here, I just copied on more of these rotating blocks, and by moving them over to each side, you can see here I get this double folding mechanism, and that gives me a super tall wall. But now slowly making my way in towards the birds, I was able to kill every single one, and I ended up beating the level. Now after that one's the Duke's prototypes here, and for this one, there's a lot of sheep with bombs on them. They seem to get in the way a lot, and the normal way I solve this level is usually using a flying machine. Since I can't make one of those here, my new plan was just to make a very fast car and hope that I could weave in all of them and not hit anyone. My first few attempts here did not look very promising at all, but after just barely missing the first few sheep here, I was able to get through all the insignias and that ended up being a level. Now next up here is a level that I thought was going to be impossible. Now for this level, you have to destroy enough crops and ordinarily I usually use a saw blade or the regular blade. I had realized though by copying enough of these blocks on top of each other, just by shooting them into the crops, I was able to get a little bit of percentage on the bottom. This told me that as long as I drove through these fast enough, I should be able to destroy them and it me doing that here. It was a little bit tense since these farmers were after me, but after moving around pretty carefully, I was able to get enough of these crops here and that beat the level. After that, we have the well level here and this one is always a little tricky. I have to get two jugs into the well, which means I need a good way to grab them. Now I started out here by adding on some steering hinges to the front and you can see once I got those in place here and separated them out enough, I added on a log and I copied it a bunch. This was that I could instantly punch the well open so I'd be able to get into it. Unfortunately though, it seemed to be really random whether or not I was going to reach it. Also here, I was having a lot of trouble grabbing onto these jugs and also moving around. To solve the first problem here, I had an idea. I wanted to try using a wheel instead of using a block. And you'll notice once I shoot it, it seems to go very straight. But adding more of these on here, you can see very obviously it shoots just straight forward and back. And that means I can create a very, very effective directional charge. And after that, I also added on some steering hinges on the bottom to flip me up. This let me get in the well, and although it was a little bit tricky at first, the second one seemed to go in very easily here, and with only a little bit of moving, got it in, and that beats that level. And with the well level done here, I really liked the directional charge, and I wanted to try using it for surrounded. This is probably overkill, since I could have just used my normal car to beat this, but I wanted to give it a shot anyway, and see how it would do. Now with just three of these charges in place here, I was able to easily beat all the cannons, and clearly these wheels seem to be extremely powerful. Powerful. Unfortunately though, I can't just use these shaped charges for everything, and this next level made that very obvious. And the entire idea of it is I have to extinguish the flame on top. Now I can use the wheels to knock down the flame on top, but I still need a way to put it out, and that's kind of a problem. Normally the way I do this is by using a water cannon, but this is completely locked off to me, so seemingly there's no way for me to put this out. Now I was gonna have to sit on this one for a bit, and I decided to move on to the sword level next. Now for this level, you have to get the sword out of the ground and into the insignia. My plan here was just to shoot it with a bunch of wheels and knock it out of the ground, but every time I did this, I always got two results. Either it wouldn't come out of the ground, or it would shoot so far out of the ground that it just completely glitched out of existence. This wasn't really gonna work, and I needed a more conventional way to get it out. Now I went back to my bird mechanism here, because the movement on it did not seem too bad at all. Now after I got near the sword here, I was hoping to extend it up and fling this out of the ground, and at least to this first attempt here, I was able to move the sword a little bit.
it. With slightly better positioning though, I actually pulled it out of the ground here and that wasn't bad. Now this machine is no way gonna get this over to the insignia. So I built up another small car here and I was hoping to use this one to push it over to the end. So after that, I got it out of the ground one more time here and by moving this little car in place, I was able to push it the last little distance and that beats the level. And of course, after the sword level, here is the book level. And for this, I need to get the book inside the altar over to the insignia. Now at the very least, I could start out by shooting off the top of the altar, but getting the book out was gonna be very tricky. My first idea here is to use steering hinges and hopefully grab down and fling it out of the altar. This was kind of hard to get right though, and after I got a bunch of steering hinges on here, I was able to somewhat grab on there, but it just broke off as soon as I tried to put torque on it. Now I did get a good seating, but it seemed to just pin me in too close and that flipped me over the altar. That's when I got the dumb idea though of just shooting the altar directly. Once I did this, it took a couple tries, but the book just came straight out and with that done, I was able to easily push it over to the insignia and that beats that level. Now for another level here where I can't just shoot things, you can see here I have this crystal. The whole idea is to get this over to the insignia as it seems like all the levels in this game are, but I'm going to need a way to grab onto it and that was causing me some trouble. My bird mechanism wasn't tall enough to get a really good grip on it, so it's gonna need to add more logs. This was gonna add a lot of weight and even just trying to fit these in the build area was kind of hard. With enough trouble though, I was able to stack these on both sides and after I got those on there here, I was getting a lot more distance now and this I was hoping should get me all the way there. Now starting out here, I tried grabbing onto the crystal, but I noticed the problem. All the logs seemed to just break on me and I wasn't really able to move at all. Now to solve this mechanism from breaking, you'll see the first thing I'm doing here is limiting the angle of these steering hinges. This means that they shouldn't try to completely crush the crystal and instead I should be able to get a loose grip on it. All of the extra weight on this is making it very difficult to stay where I want and I was gonna have to take this very slowly. And you can see now I'm barely tapping my key each time to slowly bring this in position. And without too much trouble I got it over to the insignia. Now I need to bring it down somehow and to do that I kept grabbing onto it. You'll notice now I drove forward very fast. This made my entire machine fall over and bring the crystal into place. After doing a little more wheel glitching though, I was able to beat this next island here, and with that done, it's time to move on to this cube level. This level, if you've ever seen my challenges before, you know is very difficult. Now if I try to get near this cube, you'll notice my entire machine got frozen and it broke apart. That's easy enough to solve here just by using enough braces, and after attaching everything together, I'm able to drive up to it and stay together. Now this zero gravity was completely stumping me, and I had no idea what I was gonna do for it. I decided to save it for later though and move on to this consumed king level. This one you have to grab the king inside the skull and bring it over to the insignia. This wasn't too difficult and with just a few grabbers in the front I was able to drive up to him and get him out of there. This last island though is definitely not full of easy levels and next up I have revolving model F. For this level you have to rotate around the pieces in the middle to get them to align. The other thing that I normally don't focus on too much though is you have to ignite the two pillars in the front and set them on fire. I don't have any torches on me though, so the only way I thought to get fire was using the pillar in the back. This one doesn't seem to be able to set anything on fire though, so with nothing seemingly able to be set on fire, I had to skip this one and move on. And with just a few more levels here, I was able to destroy the third island and move on to the last one. Now the first level in this island I wanted to cover here is the key level. This one is usually quite difficult, but for the first time, it actually seemed like this was pretty well made for this challenge. What I need to do is grab onto the key and bring it into the hole, but I need to rotate it up into place as well, which makes it a little more difficult. Fortunately though, the steering hinges, the way that they move in, actually seems to work out well here, and it's this little neck that I made to grab onto the key. Moving up to it now, as I rotate down, it seemed to work out well, and I got a good grip on it. Unfortunately, the key is a lot heavier than I thought though, and I seemed to just roll over. With just a few extra steering hinges though, I seemed to weigh myself down a lot more, and this let me easily get the key and start to move over to the hole. Now after a lot of careful placing here, I decided to drop it in, and you can see very easily here, fell right into place, and that beats that level. And after that is one of my most hated levels, which is Ambush. Now I don't really hate this level that much, but it is kind of annoying. You have to kill everyone, and my first idea was to use a bunch of wheels. Since these things are super accurate, I should be able to snipe everyone
anyone on the walls around me, but the problem is the sheer amount of people and the slight protective positions they're in make it extremely difficult to consistently hit everyone. The other problem is if I copy in more than like three wheels, the lag really starts to add up here and you see just how long it takes to launch about half of the wheels that I need. Now I spent multiple hours trying to get this to work and I killed every single individual person multiple times, so I'm gonna hope that no one minds that I consider this level theoretically possible, but extremely annoying. Now also falling in that category here is Strange Artifact. This level is probably my second least favorite level, and it's because it's so tedious trying to get these hexagons into their holes. Starting out, you see it built up this little flipper mechanism to get it up into place, but trying to move this around is just so annoying. Now I made a few developments here, and you can see as I move around some pieces on the bottom, it should give me more flipping power. After that, I also added on a little wall in the back, and this should allow me to grab onto the hexagon and keep it from falling onto the body of the car. This first hexagon took an unbelievable amount of luck, but eventually it happened to just go straight in its hole, and after a little nudge, it got right into place. The second hexagon, though, was always a lot harder to get in, and that was no exception today. It seems like the gap to get it over is just slightly taller, which makes it a lot more annoying to get right into place. Now what I was thinking, though, and what I wanted to do was shrink down these steering hinges. This should allow me to get underneath the hexagon instead of trying to just ram right into it. This made my build a ton more consistent here, and even though it was still quite tedious, being able to consistently get under it meant that I could easily flip it up, and with a little bit of luck, it got right in the hole. Now, the second hexagon as well seemed to go just about as well, although it did take a lot longer since I needed to get even more lucky. Now, this forklift-like thing was quite effective, and I wanted to try using it on this mirror level. Ordinarily, I use a grabber to pick this up, so getting under it is super helpful. So after shrinking those down here, I lifted up the mirror, and with that, I was able to drive it into position. It took a couple of tries to get the beam pointing right the way that I wanted, but after a little bit of luck, it seemed to go right in the pot there, and he did it up. And with that level done, all I had to do is beat the final level here, and that technically completes everything. Now, I do have a few that I need to go back to, and starting out here, I have Sacred Flame. This level, I wanted to see if there was anything I could do at all, and starting out, I tried using the water right on this tower. I could see that maybe it could put it out, but unfortunately, no matter where I put it under or how I did it, it seemed like this water was purely decorative and never put out the fire. I was also thinking that maybe if I threw it really high up into the air, I could freeze the fire or maybe just glitch it out of bounds or something, but the fire always seemed to stay lit, and even just ramming this against the world boundary, I wasn't able to push it out over the side, and I couldn't ever get the fire to go out. So Unfortunately, this seemed like it was going to be the first level that is completely impossible with this rule set, and next, I was going to have to move on to this cube level. This level, I was a little worried was also going to be impossible, but I figured if I used my bird mechanism here, I might be able to get somewhere. My plan now is to figure out a way to get around the zero gravity, and already, I liked the idea of a folding car. Now, clearly, there's some area around the cube that doesn't have zero gravity, so if my car is long enough, I'll be able to have part of it outside of that range and still still be able to drive. So after extending out the back of it here, you can see that next I added on a steering hinge and another copy of the car. This allows me to flip it back and make it super long. This was exactly what I was looking for, and now I wanted to drive up and see if this would work. Now of course, the front of the car still had zero gravity, and you can see it pop into the air there. Now as I got closer in, I knew that I probably was still gonna freeze all the way through, and therefore I'll be floating, but I was a lot closer to working now, and with a little more distance, I should be able to grab the cube. So to do that, I added on some steering hinges to the front, and these should allow me to curl around the cube and get a good grip on it. And after those are in place here, you can see I'm making this zigzag pattern out of wood, and this should give me even more distance in the back and make me be able to grab onto that cube. Now, already on my first attempt here, I managed to get a great grip on that, and moving very slowly over to the insignia, it seemed to be fine, and that ended up being the level. And the last level I need to revisit here is this level with the fire. Now I tried a ton of things to see if anything would set me on fire, but no matter what I did or what I put in this pillar, I couldn't create any more fire. This effectively is just going to soft lock this level, so unfortunately this is the second level that's completely impossible. Now this is a little disappointing, but honestly, I thought that a lot more levels were going to be completely impossible. The fact that only two were not possible using the basic blocks of the game kind of blows me away. But if you guys have any other ideas for challenges, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, till next time.